I've been helping people buy boats for a couple years now, and usually it's pretty easy to find out what they want, to get them on some boats to, that meet their needs, to give them, once they choose a make and model, several options to choose from. It's all pretty straightforward and easy, unless what they want is one of these. This week on Everything You Need to Know, why is it so hard to buy a Catalina 380, and is it the perfect sailboat? They started building this boat in 1997 and entered it into the Cruising World's Boat of the Year competition in the class for mid-size cruisers, and when it was picked as the winner of the Boat of the Year, here's what Cruising World had to say about their decision. When one of the biggest production sailboat builders in the world corrals top honors and a no-holds-bar fleet of extremely able contenders, including some candidates that fetch tens of thousands of dollars more than the winning yacht, it's time to take serious notice. So gather around and look at the breakthrough 1997 mid-size cruiser of the year, the Catalina 380. The Catalina 380 was designed and built for weekend and vacation sailing with the added capability of an occasional offshore jaunt and extended sabbatical cruise. When the choices narrowed down during final de deliberations, the judges pondered a simple question. Of the 10 boats in the class, ranging from 32 to 39 feet, which would they choose were they about to embark with their families on a no-nonsense voyage of a thousand miles or so, culminating in a season aboard cruising Mexico or the Caribbean? The nod went to the larger of the two impressive Catalinas. Size was, of course, a factor, but so too was value. With a base price of under 125000 in true sail-away condition, the 380 is outfitted with a top-shelf list of gear and equipment. Among the standard components, Edson Steering Station, Schaefer Roller Furling, Alder Barber Refrigeration, Westerbeek 42-horsepower diesel engine, Maxwell Windlass, Auto Helm instruments for wind, speed, and depth, Lumar winches, Dutchman mainsail system, Z-spar mast, Garhauer blocks, and spinlock rope clutches. Catalina engineer Jerry Douglas and his design team canvassed the opinions of previous Catalina owners, particularly those who'd owned and sailed models in the builder's 32 to 36 foot range. In the layout down below, the consensus was to eliminate the double heads featured in a previous Catalina 38 in favor of a big single head, to install more storage, three cedar-lined hanging lockers plus a dedicated wet locker, and to include a good navigation station with its own comfortable spring-loaded seat. All pumps are centrally located and well-labeled for trouble-free servicing. Engine access is outstanding, as good as it gets on a boat this size. A wet area for fuel and water filters contains leaks and contributes to a dry bilge. Anchor chain is led below by way of a straightforward chute that provides an excellent fair lead. Ventilation by way of six cabin top hatches and eight opening ports is plentiful. In the interest of simplified maintenance, there's not a splinter of teak on the top side, with a very complete fully indexed manual and a boat meant to be looked after by its owner, not by a high-priced service yard. Construction is simple but stiff and strong. A separate molded grid section is bonded to the solid fiberglass hull while it's still in the mold. The hull liner, sometimes relied upon for structural support in production building, but redundant on this boat due to its independent glass grid. It's then installed over a layer of cavity filling foam. It's a new process for Catalina and one they're pleased with. The external lead keel is available in fin or wing options. It is secured with bolts to American Bureau of Shipping ABS standards. The hull deck joint consists of an external flange bonded and bolted in place and capped with a sturdy vinyl rub rail. For the accommodation plan, there's a choice between dual aft cabins or a single aft stateroom. The latter version was entered in the Boat of the Year competition. There are fiddles and bins and shelves in both cabins for storage and loose stuff. The dining table drops down with the wraparound setting to form an emergency double. The head to starboard is accessed either from the aft stateroom or from the central saloon. 
On the opposite side of the companionway, the galley revolves around a two-burner propane stove unit. There's plenty of counter space, a double sink, and even an overhead island for cups and glasses. Topside, the Catalina 380 is equipped with a deck-stepped two-spreader rig available in standard or tall versions. The main sheet and traveler are set up in a mid-boom arrangement forward of the companionway with the double-ended sheet eventually leading aft to a pair of coach roof mounted winches. Halyards and reefing lines are also brought aft to group the bulk of the sail handling chores in a safe centralized location. The deck is arranged around a huge uncluttered cockpit, the centerpiece of which is a fixed drop leaf table for dining at anchor. A walk through transom completes the back end of the boat. Reading between the lines, the non-dimensional numbers for the 380 tell an interesting story. With a displacement to length ratio of 249, the Catalina Register is a slightly more conservative figure than that generated by the venerable Valiant 40. A design introduced almost 20 years ago and widely thought to signal the birth of the so-called performance cruiser. But with a sail area to displacement number of 17.3 for the tall rig compared to the Valiant 16.4, Four, seven, there's plenty of compensation power in the sail plan. Perhaps most surprising, with a displacement of 19,500 pounds, the 380 is about the heaviest boat in this year's mid-size class. Any way you look at it, this is a substantial vessel. Combine that with a sprightly sailing qualities and generous interior volume, and you've got a winner. So that's a lot of good things said from Cruising World, but this is a 20-year-old boat, and I'm over here telling you that it's really hard to buy one. And here's why. Every time I consult with someone who wants one of these things, they start looking and they find a good one for a reasonable price, but before they can go see it, it's gone. Literally within days of being posted, these things are selling. It's insane how fast these things are flying off of Yacht World. And there's good reason for that. When you consider that the perfect boat for a couple to go cruising on is usually 38 to 42 feet, this one coming in on the lower end is going to be easier to deal with shorthanded. It'll be easy to pull it up to the fuel dock and you won't need a bow thruster to make everything work out. So it's one less thing to break. Inside that 38 feet, they somehow give you 42 foot boat real estate though. The saloon is awesome for entertaining. The dinette drops down into a bed if you need it, which you won't because guests can sleep in the V-berth while you enjoy an island bed in the back. An island bed in a 38. Who does that? You guys know I love the older model, the Catalina 42 Mark II. I bang on about it all day. But there was always one complaint I had about it, how the galley hallway just sort of ended. It just stopped at the back wall. But on the 38, they didn't do that. They made it a pass-through into the aft cabin, and I like that. It seems a smarter layout, a better use of space. They've thought it through a little bit more. Unless, of course, someone's already cooking in the galley and you need to get to the aft cabin. And this isn't the first time someone has packed big boat goodness and ideas into a 30-something footer, but usually when people do, the boat ends up too light to really go offshore. But Catalina didn't do that here. They made the boat over 19,000 pounds. 19,000 pounds. That's ridiculously heavy for a boat this size and what that translates to is more comfort and more safety when you do head offshore for a passage and a better quality of life in a bumpy anchorage. Figuring you'll be weighing it down with anchors and chain and whatever else you need to pile onto this boat, this will easily be over 20,000 pounds by the time you do hit that bad weather. So this boat's going to take care of you. To give you a comparison, the Island Packet 38, same size, is renowned for its offshore ability and it weighs 21,500 from the factory. So we're running with the big boys in this weight class. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to make these videos possible. The mission at Lady K Sailing has always been to get more people sailing more easily. If you'd like to help out, please consider becoming a patron. And a big shout out to all the existing patrons who have gotten us this far. I genuinely couldn't do it without you. So why wouldn't you buy this boat? Other than the fact that you probably can't unless you have a hundred grand and you move extremely quickly because they sell that fast. There are only a couple reasons I can think of to not buy one of these if you get the opportunity to do so. The biggest one obviously 
is the age. They're all 20 plus years old now, so a lot of lenders won't give you a boat loan if you need one, and the lenders that might have worse interest rates. Unless you take out a personal loan or home equity or something, it's getting hard to buy a boat that's a bit older now, and that sucks. The age of the boat also means they're all just about due for standing rigging now if they haven't had it already, and that sucks too. Having the rigging replaced can easily spill over 10 grand if you have somebody do it, or a little less than 10 grand if you bring all the rigging into the rigging shop yourself to save money. When Catalina made these boats, they filled some hull voids with a foam. And while they aren't structural locations, it's not really an issue, but I have to worry about this manufacturing process because it's just 20 or so years old itself. What will that foam look like today? After 20 years of being around water, is the foam going to be waterlogged or rotting now? Will it mold? I just don't know, but I would want to know before I committed 100 grand on one of these boats. The next two reasons not to buy one of these are pretty trivial at best. And from that, you can tell I'm really reaching to find stuff wrong with this thing. But at 38 feet, you will be the little guy down in the islands. Most of the people who live aboard and go cruising consider even 42 feet to be a bit smaller nowadays. A 38 is just going to look very small next to everyone else's 45 and 50 footers. But if that doesn't bother you, consider the water line. From the laws of displacement hulls, the shorter the boat, the slower the boat usually. And if you run with a pack, you may get frustrated by being the slower boat. Now, maybe none of that bugs you, and good, because it shouldn't. But it's my job to make sure that you go into this with the right expectations to avoid disappointment later. And the last thing about this boat, its looks. I hate to do this because I really love this boat for all of its space and amazing accommodations and its ability to sail well and its weight and its coastal capabilities, I think it just looks like an appliance. A very good appliance for a very specific job, but it's still an appliance. And Catalina does that a lot. There's no flair, no panache, no wow factor for me. Look at Jeannot, another appliance, but they let the artists do the windows. And I like that. Catalina needs to hire some artists and let them do something weird, something unique, something to put some magic into what is otherwise quite possibly the best medium-sized cruiser you can buy for a hundred grand right now. That's it for this week, guys. Please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Both are free for you and would really mean the world to me. Also, leave a comment below and let me know what you think of this boat, the looks, the space, the quality. Until next week, friends, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. We'll see ya.